Hello and welcome back, dear friends. It's me, Odo. We are back in our campaign of Pathfinder, uh, Wrath of the Righteous. And last time we got our third achievement, Death Through a Cordium. <laughs> this was great. I thought this was hard to achieve because, I mean, who's so stupid and kicks everything? But 27% um, of the players did it. <laughs> Okay, there's a door. There's something to watch. Let's do this. What's that? Telma, a pale and frightened half-elf, looks at you very near. His face is twisted into a grimace, like he just had something slimy. Hey, who are you? Uh, praise Baphomet. What are you doing here? Did Faxon send you? I heard a noise outside. I was busy making a list of the relics. Did something happen? Who are you? What are you doing here? Clear off before I kill you. Okay, let's do this. I'm Telma, the scribe and senior aide to Lord Santia, the plague one. And do forgive me, but Faxon has been assigned to this command. Has he not? Where is he? Why can't we answer his questions? I mean, normally I would tell him anything to get more information. Ah, this is stupid. What are you doing here? I'm compiling a list of the valuables crusader out valuable crusader artifacts. Lord Xantia has ordered that everything of use should be transported from Canabras and saved from the looting and destruction. We chose the museum as the place to collect and sort through the trophies. Unfortunately, the local thieves have proved even quicker of the mark, of the mark than the demons. They ransacked the museum in the first few hours of the assault. But there are some objects of interest among the exhibits they left behind. The museum custodian <laughs> has been kind enough to advise me on those. But where is Faxon? Old chief sniggers. <laughs> Finest season, Mendev. Turn your back and everything that isn't nailed to the floor will be gone when you turn around again. The demons have no chance against them. Masters of all trade, we are. There you go, bragging again, dummy. Thieving has never led to anything but harm, trust me. If you fought the way you thief, now that might be useful. Well, He's doing the most damage with Len. <laughs> no thanks, every person has their calling and this is mine. But imagine if you fought as well as you feed. <laughs> Where is the museum custodian? Over in the gallery. I decided I deceived him. I told him I was a crusader. It wasn't difficult. Old geezer is out of his mind. So tell me, where is Faxon? Why can't we tell him? Half elf pitches forward, but then grabs his bag and leaps away from you. You're lying. You want me to turn away so you can strike me in the back and take the papers that have been entrusted to me. Well, only a uh, Chaotic evil character would do that. The half elf leaps back nimbly, pulling a sheaf of paper from his bag as he goes. No, I have valuable letters from Lord Xantia here. I must destroy them. The cultist balls the pages up in his fist and shoves them down them into his mouth and begins furiously chewing like a hamster. A moment later, the half-elf's eyes bulge and he opens his mouth, which is stuffed with masticated paper. He tries to cough, but nothing comes out. The failed saboteur looks at you in desperation. His eyes are streaming, his face is growing paler by the second, and he falls to his knees. A strangled wheeze emerges from behind the wad of wet paper. His expressions wear from the hilarious to the grotesque. He signals to you for help. No, I want to read what it says. Speak that out. 
Want some salt or pepper with that? Now, I've never tried eating paper myself, but a little seasoning goes a long way, whatever the meal. Okay, we could be good and help the poor wretch. We could be evil and silently watch the half-elf gasp for breath. Or we could be neutral. Let's be neutral. Merciful blow ends the hapless half-elf's life. This is undoubtedly a far kinder death than suffocation. And now we can read the things that he wanted to destroy. Yeah. Largely destroyed letter. Masterwork scythe. What's that? Dagger. Breastplate. Let's read the letter. A wad of crumpled pieces of paper with visible bite marks and traces of saliva. The writing is blurred and indistinct. Most of the words are completely illegible. But some fragments are still intact. Carefully pack up all the relics and valuable magic items and hand them over to the same courier that brought you my potions. Later, I may carve you out some time away from my scientific research through the detritus you managed to steal from the crusaders. I might as well not bother, since your finds will almost certainly be of no use to me, unless I find myself in dire need of a paperweight. Still, this mission keeps you occupied and gives me an invaluable opportunity to work without you sticking your nose into my experiments. I once again remind you that the rest of the text is illegible. Only a few more sentences can be read toward the end. Punishment will be painful, brutal, and utterly inhumane. Remember this. Good luck with conquering whatever you are conquering out there. Xantir Bang. Okay, looks like a nice guy. Well, it wasn't too bad. We probably would have gotten the whole letter if we'd attacked him right away. This copper vessel and the oil inside were sanctified by Redas, priest of Iomede, and whatever. Yeah, it's just the museum stuff. No, it's not even the museum stuff because there is nothing there. This is a claw taken from Terendelef, the silver dragon and protector of Knabras. This item was donated to the museum by the town hall of Canabras. Yeah, whatever. The wand of the infamous. Ah, and Telden wrote something down afterwards. Interesting. The wand of the famous mage Zacharias, who made his name during the heroic and tragic siege of the Lost Chapel. What a mess. Everything will be gone. We'll have to be cleaned up and laid out according to the inventory list. Interesting. And this is the this helmet belonged to Batistas Scrocia, paralictor of the Order of the Gate. Hey kid, you want to help me? Could you start doing the apples for the Mm. Why does Teldon say something? He's dead. Isn't he? This must be uh, some kind of... Yeah. Okay. That's good. Then I'll be finished here as well. Okay, let's move inside there and see if we find something good. Ah, there is Telden. Interesting. 
I fought the half elf of Helden. Where was that polite young fellow got to? Ah. No, he's the librarian. The old man looking around absent mindedly shrinks away as you get closer. His head seems to shake uncontrollably, but his hands are surprisingly deft, assured, as they level a magic wand at you. Stay back. Which are you? Robber or demon? Hey, hey, take it easy, Gramps. So that's the way it is, huh? You see horns, and you think thief or demon? Ah, uh, quit scaring the old man, dummy. Have you seen your horns? They... How should I put this? They don't exactly inspire trust in a city that's currently overrun with demons. Hey, there are horns, and then there are horns. I'm not going to hurt you. The old man goggles at you in terror, but he doesn't lower his wand. A rustling comes from somewhere behind him. Rats. The old man wheels around fearfully and peers in the direction the sound came from. The hand holding the wand gradually falls to his side. Then he turns back to you. There is no fear in his expression, only war confusion. You... I'm sorry, I was distracted. What were we talking about? Okay. Who are you? The old man lowers his wand in confusion. I, I think his expression grows distraught and mournful, as though he is on the verge of crying. I forgot. His gaze falls on a piece of cloth carefully stitched to his cloak, with which reads, Tell them, Tower of Astrid Museum Custodian. Aha, uh -huh. I'm telling the custodian here. My memory isn't what it once was. My faculties are failing me. But at one time, my mind could cut like a diamond. I was a battle mage, one of the few who survived the Battle of the Lost Chapel. But I am an old man now. Sometimes I set down my keys one moment, and the next I can't remember where I've put them. Controlled amnesia. The ability of the mind to eliminate non-essential information. And your peers at the old man with suspicion. But what we have here is a case of plain old senility. With a pleased smile, the old man pulls a hefty set of keys from his pocket and proudly shows them to you. Here they are, my keys, my little lovelies. I would never give you away to anyone. Remembering himself, the old man hastily styles the keys back in his pocket. What are the keys for? Oh, these keys are for everything. I can open every door in the Tower of Astrod with these. The museum custodian on duty must carry these keys all the times. At all the times. And never be parted from them, not even for a second. And why is that? Because if the keys were left unattended, they would be pinched by thieves, wouldn't they? Thieves who strip the museum of all its treasures. What are you all looking at me for? Well, she just came and blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's give me the key. Out of the question. According to the museum protocol. Ooh, we could do a chaotic action and steal the keys. I mean, this would be what does work. Don't you understand? This museum holds things that could help in the fight against the demons. Hmm, we could do the neutral way first. Let's try the neutral way first. Writing his slip, the old man holds out the keys to you. You're right, I'm just an old duffer. Take whatever will help you and go and defend our city. Okay. Why did the demons spare you? Demon? There have been no demons in this museum. I heard them breaking into the tower, but then everything went quiet. Then a very polite young fellow came along, a half-elf. He said Canabras was under attack, but the crusaders had already recaptured the tower. 
He said he'd been sent to oversee the evacuation in, of the museum. He was very pleased to find me here. I've proved a very useful resource. I showed him all the most valuable relics, explained what they were, and he wrapped them up, labeled them, and carried them off somewhere. Oh, that's good. And I've been here all this time. I locked the doors and put guard to make sure no demon got in. But I've seen no, not uh, one of them. Haven't heard any either. I've grown hard of hearing over the years. That half-elf was a demon worshipper. What do you mean, demon worshipper? That fine young lad, so well-dressed, so polite. But he said the crusaders, oh my word, the, the relics, we must go after them. Ugh. He fell for the, um, for the, in German it's Enkeltrick. Sorry, did you say something? Hmm. What happened here? First the bell started ringing and then there were noises in the street. Then the dragon, Lady Terendalev, began to roar. I went to lock the door, but they were already inside the thieves. There were seven of them, or perhaps ten, I don't remember. They were talking some rubbish about how they were all orphans, supposedly, and that they were dangerous. They grabbed me and wouldn't let me go, and then they looted the place. They took anything with even a lick of gold on it. Relics, too. The museum boasts a very extensive collection, you know. And worst of all, they took the wand. And when they were done, they tossed me aside like a piece of old junk. They didn't even bother to kill me. Uh, what wand did the thief steal? The wand of Zacharias, my master. He was a great man, the hero of the defense of the, last chap of the lost chapel. And those scoundrels took his wand. A relic ballads are sung about Zacharias, and they are just damned thieves. Master Zacharias will return, and he will assemble all of us, his students, and will show them, I'll show them, what Battle Mage Teldon is made of. Fury sparks in the old man's eyes, spine straightens, and in a, and in a fluid motion, his hands raise his wand at the, at the ready. But a howl of rage from outside frightens off the ghosts of the past. The old man turns around and looks at you in befuddlement. You were just asking me about something. I forget what it was. Let's ask where the rules are. I haven't the foggiest. They're thieves. They know out of the way places where they won't be found. That's where they are. If they are still alive, but they won't be in the city. I heard them talking amongst, amongst themselves about how they needed to get out of Inabris before the demons wiped them out. So, are you all right? Old age, my young friend, old age, and the poison of fear seeping into my mind. Both have turned me from a crusader and battle mage into the sorry specimen you see before you. This museum is all I have. Whatever I forget who and where I am, I just read the exhibit labels. They are of the path, just like me, and now some ruffians have ransacked this place. I'm frightened. My young friend, I'm very frightened. Oh, I'm really sorry for him. Don't be afraid, the girl whispers. There's nothing to be afraid of. All scary things have already happened. They're in the past. Hmm. Scary, so scary. Tell me about the museum exhibits. It would take a lifetime, blah, 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 blah. Those painting... Are uh, Argona and Dariel the Silver Twins, as they were called? Okay, whatever. I actually met them, you know, when I was a young man studying under Master Zacharias. They have no, had no airs or graces about them. They walked among the mortals, they spoke to us, they healed our wounds. Lady Targona, I remember especially well, 
She had a special unearthly wisdom with her, within her. The angel Lariel, on the other hand, was known for his daring and the youngest crusaders idolized him. I wonder where they are now, the twins. We don't have celestial beings in our ranks anymore. They all left sometime during the Second Crusade, on a very important mission, they say. But I do love looking at this painting and remembering those days when the envoys of the heavens walked among us and the light that seemed to shine from within them. What was I saying? You must be a messenger, yes? Or are you a visitor? Why did those times end? Why do the Celestials not fight with us still? Heaven has not abandoned us, surely. Heaven is above us, far, far away. Everyone there is good, I heard. But they can't see us from all the way up there. No religion check passed. Said that the angels Targona and Lariel are twins, but how can angels have siblings? That's a good question. Of course, angels are not born like mortals, so they can't have a mother and a father, or sisters and brothers, as we understand them. Angels come into being from reincarnated souls, or from the pure essence of the upper planes. Sometimes angels may adopt some features of mortals, for instance, they can identify as male or female. Although there is not generally no way. Some of them can also develop bonds of camaraderie, camaraderie or even of kinship. But the case of the Silver Twins is rarer still. They are two angels who emerged from one soul. What else should they call themselves if not twins? Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, go to the Defender's Heart. There are good people there. They look after you. This was a good action. We'll have to do an evil next. Really, it's safe there. But how can I leave the museum? His gaze falls upon the traces of the ransacking. The old man becomes lost in thought, as though trying to find an explanation for what he is seeing. You know what happened here, don't you? Thieves, they were prowling about, wanted to rob the museum, but I stopped them. Those ne'er do wells came in here, and I gave them what for, a dose of battle magic. They won't be back. Don't you worry about me. I may be old, but I can still hold my own. Okay. Probably. Uh, there weren't thieves. Probably just... Mildman's bewildered gaze follows you as you go. Okay. Interesting talky talky. Let's just loot the place. And then we'll stop for today. Yay, and now we also have the keys so we can get in everywhere. Okay, my dear friends, I'll stop for today. I hope you enjoyed. See you then. Bye.